Hey, my friends. Hi, my friends. How are we doing on YouTube today? We're at the doctor's house. A doctor's house. A lot of my customers are doctors. That's just how I roll. So well, you can see it back there. And uh, we got to do, uh, here comes the landscapers. We got to do the uh, uh, toilet and the powder room. It's uh, American standard. It's a 1.6 gallon, one piece. And uh, what we're going to do is put in uh, a new flush valve. Because again, um, what the, the original problem is he's uh, saying is the chain broke on the flapper or the or also known as the flush valve uh, but my theory with toilets is as long as I'm here and I'm doing it I'm gonna replace everything in the toilet so I'm gonna put a new flush valve aka flapper I'm gonna put a new um, fill valve uh, aka ballcock one of these guys and this toilet takes it this would fit perfect universal uh, 400a and we're gonna put a new supply line, which is the pipe that goes from the bottom of the tank to the shut off in the wall. We're gonna put a new supply line, and uh, that way everything is done in the toilet. Uh, generally, they say this toilet stuff lasts like five to seven years. Um, so everything's done, and, and we won't have any worries for uh, like five to seven years here. Example of a, uh, they come in different lengths, but uh, uh, supply line. Uh, special for toilet. It's got this big end on it and the three eighths on the other end. Um, so uh, so yeah. So we do everything, um, and then we don't have any worries. And the doctor doesn't have any worries. And the toilet is efficient. And it flushes. It doesn't get clogged, and uh, it doesn't give any uh, any trouble. Because if, uh, for instance, you're you got a bad flapper, and it's all waterlogged and old, and uh, it's not working right um, I'm looking in my flapper collection and and your flapper is old and it's waterlogged and it's not working right you're not gonna get a good flush when you don't get a good flush your toilet clogs up a lot which means you gotta like um, use the plunger all the time um, life sucks when you gotta do that it's a fucking goddamn uh, uh, fuck up you gotta keep uh, plunging your shit balls out of there um, not a good way to live. You want your toilet, you push it, you flush, and that's it. Troubles are gone, down the drain. So, um, whatever the fuck I was saying. Um, but that's my uh, thought on uh, on toilets. As long as you're in there, uh, do everything. Because, uh, especially when you're getting paid for it, and you know, I'm, I'm big with the small business, and I, and I try to encourage people to... Uh, to open their own business, whether you're uh, cleaning up dog shit from a yard like a pooper scooper business, or you're fixing computers at people's houses, or you're, uh, you know, you're doing Wi-Fi at houses, or uh, you're hanging TVs on walls, you know, whatever, um, all of the above, whatever, you know, um, I'm a, I'm a big uh, uh, proponent of uh, of small business, and it, it's something like this, a job like this. I mean, sure, I could come, yeah, and just fix the flapper, you know, and, and save the doctor some money, and let's say charge him like 50 for the visit, because it takes like three minutes to change a flapper, and maybe $19 for the flapper, you know, I really paid like six for it, um, but, uh, you know, and $79 and be done with it, but sure enough, in, in a month, a month and a half, I'm going to get a call, hey, Dino, you know, that toilet's not acting right, you know why, because the other part in it, the fill valve, you know, has, has taken a shit. It's gone south. It ain't working no more. So uh, so now, uh, being the responsible party that I am, a stand-up guy, and also being the last guy that, that touched the toilet, and he's my customer, long-time customer, you know, I got a responsibility to stand behind this repair. You know, I can't go explaining to him, oh, there's, you know, three or four parts in the toilet. I only fixed one. He's going to start getting, like, hinky ideas about me that I'm, like, maybe taking advantage of him or something, you know? So, given the chance to get my head in that toilet, I'm replacing every serviceable part in that toilet so that I won't get that call in a month and a half. And I'm going to charge him today. You know, the minimum service house call hour, 125, plus um, all the parts together, the fill valve, the flapper, and the supply line, and, and maybe, uh, maybe, a, uh, maybe a, a flush handle, you know, 
maybe a handle, but uh, all right. So, um, so I'm gonna charge him maybe seventy dollars in parts plus the one twenty-five, and uh, and I'm gonna you know have a nice hour's work here and a check to put in the bank, and and he's gonna have a dependable toilet that's uh, you know for the next five to seven years. Every shit that's in it's gonna get flushed down the pipe, and uh, and everybody's happy. So. You know, that's my little rant on uh, on piecemeal work versus like a rebuild job, you know, and, and what's better for the consumer, homeowner, and what's better for the uh, for the businessman, the contractor, the handyman, you know, and, and what's better uh, for both parties concerned is doing the right job, and doing the right job is replacing everything. So, uh, <coughs> all right, <coughs> he's got that... That little white plastic, uh, here's my flapper collection anyway, um, so I try to keep stocked up, alright, so he's got this guy, or does he have, alright, there's two, uh, these two look exactly the same from the top, but, um, I don't know if you get a good shot on that, alright, so these two look exactly the same from the top, although they're different, and when you flip them over, one is flat, and the other has like a cone on the bottom. So I don't know. I didn't open. I didn't flip it over yet. His. So I'm gonna take both of those in. I got. Uh, I got the fill valve. I got supply line. But there's a couple of different lengths. So let me get a couple of different lengths on the supply lines there. Okay. A couple of different lengths on the supply lines. Because I didn't look, you know. Um, and uh, and let me get. Uh, um, oh, flapper supply line. Okay, so we got that stuff now. Um, I just need uh, one additional tool from the truck here, and that is uh, that is this thing that sucks the water out of the tank. You could also use a paper cup or a sponge, or or a little uh, cut up uh, like bleach jar underneath to catch the water. And then also, I'm gonna want to bring in a universal. Um, a universal. Um, I'm gonna want to bring it in. Where the hell is it? Okay. I'm looking through the truck here. I'm gonna want to bring it in. Here it is. A, uh, a, uh, a universal uh, flush handle. All right. So let's. Uh, the tools are already in there. I love these flowers down here. Them guys. Them yellow guys. Alright, so uh, we're just going to pack everything in the bag here. Okay, there's the, the tank cleaner outer, the handle, a couple of different flappers, a few different lengths of supply lines, a flush valve, we're going to need um, a rag, and we're going to head on in there, walking right past the land scraper. And uh, in 10 uh, or 11 minutes, we're going to have this uh, toilet back in operation. What's up, amigo? So just the housekeepers here inside. Nice lady. Okay, first we're just going to clean the area around where we're going to work so we don't break anything this afternoon. This just takes a second. We'll move into potpourri and the decorative votives and, and everything else. Okay. And we have the lid uh, in a safe spot because we don't want to uh, break the lid. Although, replacement lids, you can Google them up using the part number in the toilet. But it's going to cost you 100, 120 bucks for a used one plus shipping. Um, plus the embarrassment of breaking a stupid thing. So always put the lid in a safe spot. First thing we do, and again, this is getting this crap out of the way, is to shut off. Okay, we're going to shut that off. A um, couple of things with this, and it, this might be a review for some of you. Problems with this could be that it's actually stuck. In which case, I would get in here, and I would try actually make it loose, actually tighten it up, because sometimes that'll crack the, the stuckness, and loose and tight and loose and tight until I get it to close. 
This is called the packing nut. An issue you can have with this is it'll actually leak at this where this the knob shaft goes into the packing nut. And that's because they almost never get used every like, you know, 10 years when they're fixing the toilet, this will get used. So when you do use it, they tend to leak right here. So always double check before you leave that it's not leaking. If it is indeed leaking, it's very simple to fix. What you do is you get in here with a, with a wrench and you give it like a, just snug it up, like an eighth of a turn, clockwise is tight. So you give it like an eighth of a turn tight and, and that trick will also, if it's stuck sometimes, you could try getting in here and, and loosening this a quarter or a half a turn and then try to get it unstuck. Uh, so that's another little trick there. Uh, I like to get this stuff clean before I start working because we are going to be replacing this supply line here. And, uh, uh, but I also do like to clean up as long as I'm, uh, as long as I'm in here. Okay. It's very dusty. No one ever cleans back here. Okay. Okay. Okie dokie, so that's cleaned up. Okay, so that's the first thing we do is shut off the supply line. The second thing we're going to do is actually flush the toilet. And as you can see, the uh, the handle is actually snapped right off inside here. So it's a good thing I brought that universal replacement. So, and the reason it's snapped is probably... Alright, so I'm flushing it by hand. I'm lifting up that uh, flapper. Alright, we'll let, hold it up so all the water that could possibly go down will go down. And this guy, you just kind of reach in here and you, you pull the little hinge up carefully because it's plastic. You don't want to break it. And um, you don't want to break these little nubs on, on the base of this pipe. You can see that nub. They definitely don't want to break nub there and a nub on the other side. Definitely don't want to break it. And those nubs is where... Okay, so it's this style with the cone in it. And you can see what's bad is actually this um, rubber is like disintegrating. So probably what's happening is because this is in such bad shape and disintegrating is it's actually physically getting stuck to its seat down there. And when they operate the handle, it has snapped the plastic right off at the uh, thing because this is physically disintegrating and getting stuck. That's exactly what happened. Um, all right, so those nubs at the bottom of there, those nubs, you can see that one nub right there, and, and these key into it, click, click. Okay, so we have one of these, there's the broken arm coming out, and we got the garbage. Okay, we're gonna use that, that's a nice looking garbage can. Okay, so now we got about two inches of water down there. Um, and we're going to want to get that out, so the next thing we're going to do is uh, use that sucker pump I got, and we're going to suck uh, the water out of there, and we're going to put it in here. You could use a paper cup, you could use a big sponge, uh, or you could um, take this uh, nut off at the bottom here, uh, and uh, take this apply. We're going to take this off anyway, and usually these are just hand tight, these ones. So this won't let the water out of the tank, although some water will come out with this because this is the pipe going in. But uh, you could loosen up this nut, okay? And then water would come out and you could have a bucket down here to catch it. So that's another way to get the water out. Um, so let's get the water out of the bowl.
I must have sounded like a voice to her. Okay. All right, so this thing has this little tip that gets flat on the bottom of the balls, but this ball actually has a recess down here. That All right, so that job is done. Okay, the tank is empty. So, tank is empty. Next thing we do is we're going to put a rag under there and using a small channel lock set on the wide opening we're going to get in here on I'll show you in a second but we're going to get the bottom of the ball cock that nylon bolt Just loosen up half a turn and then you can get what? I'm going okay, okay, no problem. Right. Okay, then you can get in here with your fingers. And we set it up. Okay. Alright, so what I did was I got I got underneath there with the channel locks and I gave this a half a turn and then the rest I unscrewed it uh, by hand. Uh, this black part could get pretty yucky, so uh, maybe you don't want to touch that. Um, there's actually a piece of brass here for the scrap metal bucket. Um, the rest is garbage. Um, so, let's get our uh, piece of brass off of here. There's actually two, three pieces of brass. There's a couple of brass screws and this float rod. Okay, okay, there's a nice piece of brass and uh, these two little guys and the brass I think right now is a dollar sixty a pound so this is probably six or seven ounces this is like I would say like 50 cents right here so uh, I mean I'm not gonna run to the scrapyard with <clears throat> thinking 50 cents worth of metal but I got a bucket back in the shop and and I'll fill it up and when the five gallon bucket is full of this kind of stuff it's like 140 150 bucks it happens like twice a year and uh, I do it on days when I'm not so busy which is very few and far between okay so at this point okay I want to show you something very important now this is very important this is the seat where the Okay, I want to show you something very important. I want to show you something very important. And I showed you how this flapper is all disintegrating the rubber. And I told you it was sticking to the seat. So you could see all of this yuck on the seat here. This is where it was actually sticking. If I put the new flapper on here without cleaning this up, it's not going to get a good seal and we're going to have a leaky toilet. So what I'm going to do is get in here, okay, with a rag and I'm going to clean all of this yuck. I can actually like scrape it off my finger. All of this yuck off of this seat so the new flapper has a nice seal. And it's very important because you could do all the work of rebuilding this thing and if you don't clean the yuck off the seat, you're still going to have a problem toilet. And it only takes a minute, and it's all of this stuff in this part of the toilet. This is all clean supply water. This is not a part of the toilet that sees any waste. So there's no reason to get squeamish about it. Okay, that's looking better. Let's just get it one more time. Okay. That's looking better, and as I rub my finger around, that's a nice, it's going to make a nice seal there. Yeah, I hope I got a good camera angle. 
So about all the tools we're going to need for this at this point is nippers, an adjustable wrench, and a pair of channel locks. I'm going to come in here in the bottom of my supply line. You're going to take off the old supply line counterclockwise. I can't say it enough. Lefty loosey, righty tighty. So what I did was at the bottom of the supply line, that nut I put, and counterclockwise to loosen. You want to be careful putting the new one on that you finger tight first so you can positively 100% sure you're not cross threading it. Because sometimes with this a little bent on the new one, it's tough to feel which way is exactly. So you want to be double, triple check you're not cross threading this on by finger tightening it. And then you're going to put the wrench on. And after it's totally finger tight, you're going to give it like a half a turn with the wrench. And that connection is done. The top connection, same thing, you want to get it in place and make sure you're holding it straight in relation. Straight in relation to the, well actually this, this nut is going to be up against the bottom of the tank. Okay, this flat nylon nut up against the bottom of the tank. Okay, and you get it finger tight and then you get in there with your channel locks. Then you give it a half a turn against the bottom of the tank. You don't want to over tighten any of this plastic stuff because you'll crack it. And then you want to make sure that this, remember the, uh, the bottom end is already fastened to your shut off valve. And you want to position this by manipulating and bending it and so that it's straight in relation to the shaft. Everything is straight. And then start finger tightening so you know it's not cross threaded if it was cross threaded i'm talking like something like this i'm exaggerating of course but something like this where you get the threads crossed okay and then you would you tighten it up with the threads crossed and you, you're going to ruin both parts so you want to make sure everything is straight and if it is straight it's going to go on easy with your fingers and then when you get it snug up then you can give it that half a turn to make it tight so that's my little lesson on cross threading that works with any kind of nut and bolt any kind of connection like that it's all the same rules so here's our new uh, ball cock on this one we're going to have to uh, because it's a different style than the old one we can't eyeball the length because they're adjustable in height. And you can actually pull this out and put it back in. They're adjustable in height depending on the water level. And uh, the old one had a, a, a ball and a rod, and this one is this. So we can't just eyeball them next to each other to get the height. So we're going to put it in and, and we're going to um, eyeball it. And there's also an adjustment here that's good for like a, an inch each way. And the major adjustments is done here. But what we want, and I'll show you in a bit, is the overflow tube. We want the water like a half, three quarters of an inch below the top of the overflow tube. So uh, they give you this little bunch of stuff here. You pull it apart. This is a double washer here. It's a combination, and we want to separate them. So this middle one we're not going to use, but we are going to use this one. It goes in this direction on the bottom, okay? This is going to make the uh, this is going to make the seal at the bottom of the tank with the new bolt that they they have provided us. Okay, and we want to orient it so that the outlet for the little dribble tube is kind of facing towards the overflow pipe. But we also want to make sure that this doesn't make contact with the sides of the tank that would make it get stuck because this controls the water on and off. Um, and if it gets stuck anywhere, you're either going to be stuck with the water running or no water at all. So we want to make sure that moves freely when we have it installed. Uh, I'm going to take my rag and I'm going to just wipe the bottom of the tank around where that rubber seal is going to go. So we know there's no debris there and we're going to get a good seal. And we're going to put that on the floor. So here we go. I'm going to stick this in there. And I'm going to eyeball to make sure that I have it in a good position. Nothing's going to get hang up. And that little tube is kind of facing towards the overflow. I'm going to reach underneath and careful not to cross thread it. We're going to put the big nut on there. And we're going to finger tighten it. And I'm going to double check that everything is okay. And that nothing's interfering. Now I'm going to give it that half a turn. Okay, to tighten it up. The new one. 
there's actually thumb lugs on it that you don't need the, the channel lock to tighten it up. The old one, yes, you needed the channel lock. The, this new design, no. Uh, okay, so at this point, <coughs> we're going to put on our supply line. And uh, I have a couple of different lengths here. And we're going to eyeball for the, for the best one. I got a 9 inch. Um, I got two 9 inches. I got like a 6 inch and I got like a 20 inch. And a 20 inch, you could, uh, you could always loop. So sometimes I'll just carry the long one because it works for the short and the long ones. Um, these shorter ones, you can't loop because you'll kink it. Um, I would say anything over like uh, 12 inches, you could loop. The shorter ones under 12 inches, I wouldn't loop them. Let's see how the 6 inch looks. Oh, this might be just fine in 6 inch. Yeah, the 6 inch is going to work. So I'm reaching around under the toy with one hand to hold it. And with my left hand, I'm going to turn it. And again, double, triple check it. Okay. It's on this feet, it's not cross threaded. I double chip, triple check the way I feel. I got a finger tight. Now we're gonna give it that half a turn. And this one maybe I'm gonna give it another half a turn and get it nice and snug. And we're gonna dry off the pipe with our rag because later on when we turn it on, we're gonna be able to double check that nothing's leaking. Now the top of this has to go on the bottom of that fill valve. So I'm bending and manipulating, but I don't wanna kink it and I wanna get it oriented straight. And then finger tight it. This is good, it's not cross threaded. Didn't give us too much trouble. Okay, now I got it snugged up, and again, this one has finger lugs on it. And uh, I can explain finger lugs to you. You see the where it makes it easier to grab that you don't need a wrench? Because these got nice rubber seals in them. You, you don't really need to make them super wrench tight, just finger tight. So get it on there snug and then give it a half a turn. All right, so I got it on there snug now. And I'm also holding the top of my uh, fill valve so it actually doesn't twist in there. Okay, that's our half a turn. That's nice and tight. Double check this. Looking good. I'm not turning the water on yet. We got to finish up in the tank here. The next thing we're going to do is take our tube, and this goes from that nub I showed you at the top of the ball cock. It goes from the nub. Which is, if they got a good picture of the nub. Okay, so it goes from, in the nub, is, that's the nub. It goes from that plastic nub, that plastic nub, to the top of the overflow tube. Which, if you look in this picture here, so we're going from the nub to the top of the overflow tube. This over, overflow tube... It has a little plastic fitting that the hose fits right in, but if you don't have that, they supply in this kit, they supply this that clips on the overflow tube and the water would shoot straight in. And the reason of this water shooting in that overflow tube is that's what gives you that swirl around the bowl when you flush and it, it rinses down the sides of the bowl. That's what this is for. It's very important and it must go in the overflow tube. So, uh, so this one has this little fitting. We're going to double use it. I'm putting it back on there. I'm taking my black tube. I'm going to make sure it's pushed all the way on the nub. And then I'm going to take my nippers and I'm going to eyeball the length that I need because I want a nice neat job. I don't want too much in here. We're going to nip it and we're going to stick it in there nice and neat. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is install. we could do is take the whole clapper and we can eyeball the chain length although we're putting a new flush arm on so maybe on this one we're not gonna eyeball it but you can always eyeball the chain length between the new one and the old one before you put it in and do the chain length out here where it's easier to work rather than in the confines of the bowl so let's at this point put our new uh, flush arm on there And this guy, the one thing about this is the threads are reversed. So normally it would be lefty loosey, righty tighty, but this they have it reversed. So it's uh, 
it's lefty tight and righty loose. That's the one thing about this that confuses a lot of people. And the reason of that is uh, because all the time pushing down, flushing, if it was normal threads, it would eventually loosen up. So they have them reversed. So actually, when you push down and flush, you're actually making it tighter all the time. So we got to get the old one out first. And again, this is the tricky part because this one is reversed. So normally, I would want to uh, uh, go counterclockwise to loosen it, but I'm actually going to go tight to loosen it because the threads are reversed. And, and here's our old one, okay? Broken right off there. And I'm going to take this opportunity to clean behind the handle there, okay? We're going to thread the new one up and through. And actually, this is not the right style. I think I have in the truck the right style for this. This makes a crazy bend because it's kind of at a 45 degree angle. I gotta run out to the truck and take a look. So I'll, I'll be right back here. We have this uh, Mansfield. Now I'll tell you, um, okay, that's a Mansfield, but that's not gonna work. That's special for a Mansfield. Um, I make the investment and I carry, you saw that box of flappers, you see I got a whole bunch of flush arms. Um, it pays in my mind to carry the parts that you may need, even though it's an investment and uh, takes up room and stuff, but the closest plumbing supply that would have something for this toilet, it's like a 20 minute drive to Port Washington and then 20 minutes back to here in uh, in Roslyn, this part of Roslyn. So um, it's better that I have this stuff with me. Um, I just gotta move the, okay, that's, that's cool. That's gonna work. Okay. Alright, back to putting our flapper on and adjusting the chain length. So this one's got a nice new seal on it. Um, and uh, <coughs> I'm going to have to shorten this chain up. These beaded chains are a bit of a pain in the ass um, to, uh, to adjust. But let's see what we can do. Okay, so this is going to go in there. And then I'm going to need the chain to be about... Gonna need a chain to be about that long, okay? So we're gonna nip it at the length I eyeballed. Now, one additional tool we're gonna need is the needle nose to get this little ball and chain out of this little clip here. So I hold it with the needle nose, and then, okay, got it out. Now. Here's our new flapper, and um, let's see if I can show you this. Okay, so there's the little ball and chain clip, and that could slid right in there until it locks in there, okay? So let's see how this length looks. Oh, that looks just fine. So now I'm going to clip this new flush valve on those ears that we talked about before. Carefully as not to crack the ears. Oh, that looks just fine. That looks just fine. Okay, now the clip on the, on the chain, we're gonna bend to, onto the arm so it doesn't slip off in use accidentally. Now at this point, we are ready to turn on the water supply, check for leaks, and check that this thing actually works. Oh, and I gotta check the, um, I never locked in the, uh, the flush valve at the right height. So, we want to see how our lid looks. And I think we're gonna make it... We're gonna make it as high as it could possibly go with the lid. Okay. And the lid still has to go on there. there you go. Now I'm gonna reach in and put that little clip down. Because we didn't do that yet. It's gonna work. 
which is fine. Okay. Okay. All right, so now that's straight down. I'll show you in a second what I did. Now I'm going to be looking down here for me, so I'm going to be checking. I'm going to be looking down here for leaks. I'm going to be checking the shaft of the shuttle valve. I'm going to check the fitting. And a lot of it's by feel, by just running my dry fingers over it. And if they come up wet, we know there's an issue. That looks good. So, we're just going to wipe everything down and double check it again in a minute. Make sure my chrome is all shiny and stuff. Okay. Now, I'm coming in here. It shut off. It filled up. It shut off. Let's check that it flushes. So what I did, what I did is we use the cap on the overflow tube. It's a little bit of a tight fit with that collar flush on, but it doesn't do work. And we double check this with only no interference with our uh, with our, our cloak here. Um, I still I got a good height. I got a good height on the water height. Um, Everything's looking good in here. The, the hose is nice. There's no interfere right into there. All right. Everything's looking good. Um, we are double checking the flush. We got a nice, powerful flush. Good deal. Good deal. Good deal. And double checking the Double checking this by running our dry fingers. 